Hello all, uh, this is my new chair I got from Ikea. I'm very pleased with it so far. Um, so, last time I did a YouTube video, I was in Taiwan teaching children English, and now I'm in Beijing at a software company and I'm head of developer support. So, big changes for me. But anyway, uh, what this video is about is using Ruby with Cocoa, like Ruby on any, any Apple stack. And the reason I'm into that is, well, since I'm at work uh, and we're, we're like an iOS platform company, I've been involved with a lot of uh, Objective-C, I've, I've used tons and tons of apps and I've helped developers add stuff to their apps. And I was getting into Ruby like just before I started working there and I really want to use a higher level language or I should say as high a level language as I can. And I I was working on this amazing book called Practical Ruby Projects for the Eclectic Programmer by Topher or Topher, I'm not sure, T-O-P-H-E-R, Sill. And one of the projects in the book was like first you make a command line game, simple game, but still. Uh, a game that you, you play, it's totally text-based, and then the next chapter he makes a beautiful Cocoa GUI for the game. And you slap it on because he made everything modularly and did it well because, you know, he's awesome and stuff. Um, so I've, uh, I was I was messing around with that, and then I found out there was like a, another technology that was gaining traction instead of Ruby Cocoa, which is called MacRuby, it's uh, an in-house Apple project, so that's what uh, that's what I've just finished up doing. So I took Topher's um, game that he did in uh, Ruby Cocoa, and I converted all of that into Mac Ruby, and it works. And so that's that's a good feeling. Um, it's still a little bit hard to like actually bundle apps for distribution on the App Store. It's it's possible to do it with Mac Ruby, but it's it's not easy. Anyway. Um, Let's get into it. I'll start with Ruby Coco. Um, this just makes a window with a title on it, and that's it. As you can see, this is pure Ruby. You require OSX slash Coco, and that gives you access to the whole framework through a bridge. So it's a bit slow, and notice all the weird underscores in the ns window dot alloc dot init. Um, it wouldn't look like that in Objective C. Okay, so. I'll run this and it'll pop up a really simple window, but it is cool. But now there's something cooler, MacRuby. It's actually the name of the interpreter, MacRuby as opposed to Ruby. It's a Ruby interpreter built on top of Objective-C and Cocoa. So you get everything in them and you get everything in Ruby too. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. It also comes with uh, a Mac IRB. This is built into Lion, although it's, uh, I believe it's a private library, not a, not a public one. But you can still download it for free. All right, so the easiest way to show you what MacRuby is like is just give you a few examples. Let's say that S is uh, some string. This is how you would make a string in Ruby. And sure enough, s.class, the class is a string. Um, the interesting thing, though, is if you look at the ancestors, string inherits from ns mutable string. So that means every string you make in MacRuby inherits from ns mutable string and ultimately from ns object. And you've still got the Ruby kernel in there. Um, you can make a string though, you can make it the way you normally would in Objective C. ns mutable string with, oops, dot alloc dot init with string. Another string, and the thing that's that's nice is uh, they're the same. You can use Ruby methods on the one that you created with uh, uh, with alloc dot init with string, for example, case, and you can also access any of the Coco methods. So it gives you a lot of leverage. Um, why would you want to do this? Uh, well, obviously, if you want to make uh, an NS speech synthesizer, it's way easier just to use Cocoa instead of writing your own from scratch in Ruby. And on the other hand, sometimes Objective-C syntax is kind of a pain. 
like uh, to make a hash, for example, a hash in Ruby, call it h equals hash dot nil, and you've got one. Or or you could even just say that, and you've got a hash. Uh, the way you do it in Objective C usually is let's see h3 equals ns mutable and you wouldn't necessarily they wouldn't necessarily be mutable all the time in Objective C but the Ruby ones are mutable because Ruby hashes are mutable mutable hash dot alloc dot init oops uh, ns mute Hash. Oh, mutable dictionary, right? Then I looked at an it. Okay, and if you want to add an object to a hash, uh, no, I mean the way you do it in Ruby is is just dead simple. So uh, let's say uh, each of these has a color uh, uh, color key. So um, color is set to purple in our first hash. This is how you would do it in Ruby. That's really easy. The way you would do it in Objective C, though, is let's see, h2 dot object. I'm sorry, h2 dot set object color for key. A lot of work to do basically the same thing. Um, so obviously you want to use the highest level language you can. At least I want to use the highest level language I can because I don't like typing and even with autocomplete and Xcode I don't like reading huge reams of code. Okay so let's uh, let's get back to Xcode. Because you get access to all of Coco from Ruby. Okay, now I'll go back and do the same simple window in MacRuby. So we add a framework, app kit. You don't need the OSX colon colon anymore, so I'll get rid of them all. And now those those weird underscores, look at this. I'll get rid of them. And it really looks pretty close to Objective-C style syntax once we get this done. Like this. Yeah, so now it's it's pretty easy to see what uh, what key goes with what parameter and we don't need the OSX there all right run it and we should get the exact same window as we just had with Coco and there we are okay so here's a little bit more complicated of an example this one actually uses an app delegate and we've still got the same kind of window let me fix this formatting okay this one, we use a Ruby function, uh, time, to get a time. We use that time for the title. Notice all these assignments are like Ruby assignments with a dot notation and just an equals. Instead of set title or set level, it's just level equals, title equals. The delegate for the window is app delegate. And we create a button and we set the target of the button to the app delegate. We set the action to say stuff. Inside the app delegate, we have to make a function called say stuff. So you can see it's a pretty small app delegate. Um, there's a function say stuff, which is just a one liner. It'll say that string. In application did finish launching, we say, uh, create voice, which is an NSS speech synthesizer. And then we use that in the function. We set the voice type to whisper. And so anytime you click that button, it'll whisper, listen closely, Ruby is available right on top of Objective-C and Cocoa. All right, let's give this a try. Listen closely, Ruby is available right on top of Objective-C and Cocoa. Okay, and now the exact same project in Xcode. Very neat. Okay, now for the real fun. Here's the strategy game from uh, Practical Ruby Projects. I actually modified it a bit. I added uh, a ranger class with a uh, bigger range and better movement and a uh, uh, new kind of dinosaur. I thought I put a brontosaurus in there. Anyway, it's 
a small customization off of the game that was was in there. It's a command line game. And in the book, there's a, a Cocoa Ruby implementation. You can download that from the, the publisher's website. And I took that and converted it into a Mac Ruby implementation, which uh, is cool because it, it runs faster and I understand it better and, and uh, it just makes life happy. So here it is. Uh, I got these tiles from Planet Cute. The I know the T-Rexes and, and the Velociraptors look like beetles and my soldiers and medics and rangers look like anime characters, but the tiles are free. So here I click on someone and it highlights where they can move. I move there and I choose shoot. It highlights who I can shoot. And I've got stuff at the top giving you a message log of what's going on. I, I damage the Velociraptor that looks like a beetle for three damage. Um, you can move the medic, do first aid. Uh, actually, no one's in range. But uh, anyway, you get the idea. It's, it's a pretty simple game, but on the other hand, it didn't take much code. It's about 500 lines of code in the main Ruby file. And in the Coco interface, 600. So that's it for porting Dino Wars from Ruby Coco to Mac Ruby, except for getting it to work in Xcode, but it didn't even do that in the book because it, it does stuff in a weird way. Um, for my next Mac Ruby project, I think I'm going to do something that's Mac Ruby from the beginning instead of a port. Maybe maybe a Mac OS app actually. Um, I'm also going to keep on working through that book because it's awesome. Actually, yes, actually get practical programming, practical Ruby projects for the eclectic programmer. It's uh, it's just a fascinating book. It's kind of hard for me, to be honest, because I, I don't have a, like, a serious programming background. I'm coming here from an ESL background. But I'm learning so much stuff from it, and even though it's not, there's nothing else in the book that's related to Apple or Cocoa or whatever, it's neat stuff, like building a Lisp interpreter in Ruby, or genetic algorithms, or, or just stuff that will either A, be useful if I ever become a hardcore programmer, or uh, just be fun to mess with. So practical Ruby projects for the eclectic programmer. I'll put a link for it on, on the site. Uh, if anyone's got any questions about uh, what I did or, or would like to offer me help, like maybe help me get uh, Dino Wars working in Xcode, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you, everyone, and see ya.